going to learn to make motors work using the LEGO Mindstorm EV3 kit. Now if you look here on my desktop you'll see that there are two LEGO icons. The first one with the white background is the LEGO Mindstorm EV3 software education version. The second one, the LEGO Mindstorm Home Edition. Either version will accomplish the tasks we need today. So let's just choose the home version for now. You'll see when it opens they actually demonstrate some of the cool projects that you can make with the LEGO Mindstorm. For now, all we want to do is create a file that will make our LEGO Mindstorm work. We're going to go File, New Project. So we're going File, New Project. That's going to open a blank screen. LEGO Mindstorm actually offers drag and drop programming, so it's quite easy to get up and running. I'm going to go over here to the far right. If you click on this little LEGO icon, you can actually close that and give yourself some more workspace. So the first block of code is actually the play button. Down toward the bottom you'll see are all the blocks of code that we will use to write this program. Much like many other drag and drop programming, they're color coded based on what they do. All the icons with the green top are action buttons. The orange are flow control. And then the others are for a more advanced sensor and programming options that we're not going to get into today, but we will in a later tutorial. So let's stick to the green menu. In our Rube Goldberg machine, we used the EV3 block, and we also used a touch sensor and a Lego motor, so a single individual large motor. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to activate the large motor. So if you look down along the bottom, the second choice when you hover over, you'll see it actually says large motor. We're going to click on that and drag it up and connect it to our play button. The next thing we need to do are set some of the parameters. We need to tell the LEGO motor exactly what to do. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look here in the top right corner and you'll notice when I hover over it it says port D. So you want to change this to whatever port you've connected your LEGO motor to. I believe I've connected mine to port A. It's telling the LEGO brick that there's a motor connected on port A. Now we need to tell it some other things. So if you click here on the hashtag in the, in the circle you click on that, you're going to get a drop down menu. These are the various states your motor can be in. Of course, motors can be off. They can be on indefinitely. You can turn your motor on for a number of seconds. You can turn your motor on for a certain number of degrees. And that's the red part of the motor that's actually going to spin a certain number of degrees. Or the final choice is on for rotations. You can actually decide how many times that, rot that motor will spin. For this one, we're going to pick on for seconds. The next thing you're going to see is a little, it looks almost like the speedometer in your car. That's actually what controls the power and the speed of the motor. So you'll notice it's preset at 75. I have two ways to change that. I can double click on that and type a number. It also gives me a slide bar. The next number is preset. You'll see it looks almost like a little stopwatch. That indicates one second. So the motor turns on based on seconds. So let's change that to three. It should give us enough to test our motor. Okay, so what we've done, technically we've written a computer program. We have an operator, an event that's going to make it start. We have the play button. And then we've told the motor that we want it to actually do this action. Turn on to that particular speed for three seconds. That's a program. What we have to do next is we have to get the program from the laptop to the EV3 brick. What I always recommend is come up here, double click on the word program, and call it something you're going to recognize. I tend to always call mine Kim. So give your program a name. The next thing you want to do is plug your robot into your laptop or your desktop or whatever you happen to whatever device you happen to be using so that you can actually download the program to the brick. Now you may also be using Bluetooth. I'm going to stick to using the USB cable. In the bottom right, you're going to see a control panel. This is the control interface to let you know what's happening with your brick. As I plug in my brick, you'll notice that goes from being grayed out to being active. So I can tell that my brick is communicating to my laptop. We're going to download the program to the brick. If you come over here to the download button and click on the download button, you're going to hear that noise come from your robot. Now when you've heard that noise come from your brick, you know that you've successfully downloaded your program. So I'm going to play that noise again. I'm going to click on the download button and you hear that my brick has successfully received its program. So now we'll be able to unplug our brick from the computer and test it. So unplug, arrow over to the project folder, 
you'll see the name of your file. I see the word Kim. I'm going to click on the word Kim and my program executes. So that's perfect. So that's how we make a motor move with LEGO EV3. A little pro tip. If your Lego brick happens to be flashing, if the green eye on your brick happens to be flashing, that tends to mean your robot is trying to do something that it just can't do. The first thing to do is check your ports. You'll notice in my program I told the robot that I have a motor plugged into port A. Double check on your brick that you've plugged it into A. Maybe you've plugged it into port D and that could be causing a problem. We've moved the motor forward. Now suppose you want to move the motor back. You can grab yourself another brick, click on for seconds, port A, three seconds, so everything is the same, except you'll notice I saved this speed for last. To make your motor go forward, you're at positive 75, so what do you think you need to do to make it go in reverse? You guessed it, negative. So if you add a negative in front of your number, that's going to make it go in the opposite direction. So that's just a little tip for now. So if I was to press play on my brick right now, download that program, you would see my motor goes forward and then reverse. So the next thing we want to do with our program, because we set it up our Rube Goldberg machine, when all of those marbles fell into the plastic container, that actually the weight of the marbles pushes on the touch sensor. So that's what changed the state of the touch sensor. So my motors will not move until that button is pressed. So if you want to write a similar program, go down here under your orange menu, your flow control menu, and you'll notice this wait button, this wait bar. So it's a block of code that indicates something has to wait for something else to happen. So I'm going to drag that up and put it next to my play button because I want to do that first. You'll notice that all the other blocks of code move aside to allow for this block. So I'm going to say press the play button. Then I want to wait. If I click on this little timer, so I'm going to say wait. And you'll notice I have a choice of all different kinds of things I can choose there. But I'm using the touch sensor in this example. So I'm going to select touch sensor. And I'm going to compare a change in state. Now what I mean by that, I'm going to open that up again so you can have a look at it. What I mean is I'm going to wait until the state of my touch button has changed. So right now my touch sensor is up, it's in the up position, so I'm going to wait until it has been pressed. So it's changed its state, it's now in. And that's going to happen when enough marbles fall in that container to activate that. I'm going to again check the port, so I have mine plugged into port number one. Sensors all go in ports one, two, three, or four. Motors go in. A, B, C, or D. So I have that on port number one. So now what's going to happen when I, pre when I download this program and activate it, it's actually going to do nothing until the touch sensor is activated. So until those marbles fall in the cup and activate that touch sensor, the motor will never go. Happy programming!